All right, John Vinza back here with you for our session of NX Cam Hidden Gems. Now, so we're just going to have a couple points for our hidden gems uh, during this session. And one is about uh, creating multiple configuration files and, and, and why you may want to do that. Uh, there's an unlimited number of use cases, uh, but we'll talk about a few. Uh, and we'll also look at installing an MTSK, or a Machine Tool Simulation Kit, um, using a newer methodology of the .mtk file. Uh, this really takes out all the guesswork of uh, manually configuring and, and uh, setting things in DAT files and, and uh, ASCII files and, and all this kind of stuff. It's a simple kind of plug and play deal. So, first things first, we're going to look at configuration files. So before we get into why you might want multiple configuration files, let's just talk a little bit about, you know, what is a configuration file? So, uh, on the surface, a configuration file really is uh, just a series of pointers. You know, we're pointing at, at uh, uh, operation types. We're uh, uh, pointing at uh, our post-processor locations, our um, shop doc information, user-defined events available to us. Uh, different TCL and, and def files for uh, our library and tools and devices and speeds and feeds, machining data, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Feature-based machining information, uh, which is uh, our knowledge editor. A lot of, lot of different information. Uh, so now we want to talk about, you know, where or why we might want to have some different use cases here. And uh, like I said, there's uh, really no limit to where you might want or how you might want to break things up in, in your company. Um, one example we'll look at here is, is we just want to break things up uh, uh, across manufacturers. So in our example, we'll, we'll have some configuration files specific for Mazak equipment and another one specific for Haas equipment. Uh, otherwise, you may want to look at things uh, based on individual cells or... or um, you know, different plants uh, that your, your organization might have. Uh, again, it, you're really going to have to think about what makes sense for your organization when you're organizing this type of data. Uh, but at least we'll go through some different scenarios here. Uh, so again, I'm going to jump into NX. And we have a sample part here. Um, the part itself is not uh, important. Uh, but let's go through. The first thing I'm going to do is, is remove any machine tool. I, I just want to get my out-of-the-box configuration. Uh, let's reset our configuration. You can change your configuration file that's active in a CAM session uh, anytime if you go into your manufacturing preferences. And we'll just say reset to default and OK. So we didn't see anything necessarily change when we did that. Uh, however, I'll point out a few things. Um, that are controlled by uh, the configuration file. Uh, first thing, if I want to post-process this program, I can come to the post-process option, and we have a list of post-processors. Uh, these are all the out-of-the-box uh, post-processors right now. Um, I don't have any of those machines. You don't have any of those machines that are just kind of generic uh, kits. Uh, so while I... Uh, would suggest customizing them. I, I tend to not uh, change my, my out-of-the-box uh, NX installation uh, too much. I, I try to customize things uh, in a different way where I'm not affecting the out-of-the-box behavior at all. Um, but that's one thing we'll look at. How do we get different post-processors on that list? Uh, another thing is maybe we want to assign some user-defined events uh, to in, an operation. So I come down into start events and I scroll through my list here, uh, we'll see these are all the out-of-the-box um, operations other than one. I made one kind of global level here at the top level of my user-defined event file, um, just for some examples. Uh, but other than that, I have all these standard uh, NX, the kind of core user-defined events, and I might want to customize and extend these uh, later on for, for different machine tools. And same thing, uh, operations. Let's go to create a new operation. And we can see we have our full list of operation types. Uh, some of these might be applicable to the type of machine I'm programming, or they may not be. Uh, it's all the out-of-the-box information. So let's take a look at uh, a configuration file itself. And 
uh, what the contents really look like. So I'm going to start with my cam configuration file for my Haas machines. I'm, I'm calling this one my Haas machines. And in this case, I've only made two changes. I'm doing a change to my template post. I'm just pointing to a different location and uh, essentially I've copied my template underscore post dot dat file. This is what's comprised of the uh, making up the list of post processors. Uh, if you open up this template post file, we can do this right now. Uh, you'll see you have each post listed with the corresponding TCL file and definition file uh, that's going to run and execute the post. Uh, additionally, I have a user defined event for my Haas machines here. I have this UDE underscore Haas CDL. So, okay, I want to activate this configuration file. So, again, from my manufacturing preferences on the configuration tab, I can browse to a different config file. And here I'll choose my my Haas configuration file. Again, we don't see anything when we make the setting. However, if I go to post process, we'll now see I have a list of my Haas machines here. Additionally, if we go through and uh, want to assign some user defined events like we looked at before, go to my start events, and now when I scroll down, I'll see all the standard out of the box uh, kind of core functions, but I'll also see some of my custom Haas user defined events that I've made. So a couple things are interesting here. Um, one, you can. There's a number of ways that you can accomplish this. Um, the important thing is, uh, a number of my posts and, and anybody posts anybody's posts will use the out of the box user defined events. So I don't want to have multiple copies of that file. Uh, so just to understand how we can use those files, those standard functions, and uh, use our own custom user defined events, we'll take a look at my user defined event uh, underscore Haas CDL file. So I have my custom user defined events all spelled out in here. These were created um, in, in Post Configurator, um, but I'm just taking the resulting file and adding this include statement to the beginning. So I'm including the default out-of-the-box installation user-defined event file, so I get all the standard content, uh, but I'm also appending all of my custom user-defined events to it. Uh, and you can do this in, in multiple tiers. You can have multiple include statements. So the nice thing about that is I can have my out-of-the-box user-defined events. Uh, maybe I have some cus uh, company standard user-defined events that are the same across the board. Uh, maybe you think like basic header information or uh, programmer information, things like that. Um, so I can have an include statement to include that CDL file. And then I can have my maybe machine specific or, or cell specific uh, type information. So you can kind of break this down into a, a little bit uh, more granular level and not just have one uh, file controlling everything. Uh, so this is the, the approach I like to use here. Um, for including all that information. So that's one, one aspect of configuration files. Uh, let me switch, switch to another configuration. In this case, I'm going to switch to my Mazak configuration. And likewise, uh, I would see the same thing. Post processor, I have my Mazak posts available to me now. If I would go to user defined events, I'd have the uh, specific uh, Mazak UDE is available to me, um, but if I want to go ahead and create operations, I'll, I'll say that this is uh, uh, all my Mazak equipment is just three axes uh, for, for our example here. So let's uh, go in and try to create an operation that I can't use, like five. Oh, I don't have five axes here. Um, so here I can customize my environment to only make available what can actually be leveraged on the machine tool. See, I can't use uh, multi-axis operations. I can't use turbo machinery. I can't use additive operations. Uh, I've, I've limited my interface specifically to uh, three-axis type work in this scenario. 
So again, let's take a look at uh, what was unique about the Mazak configuration file. In this case, I had very similar changes, template post, user-defined events, calling out specific Mazak information. Likewise, I have changed my operation template setting. I have my own OPT file, uh, which is defining what operations do I want available to me. And if we take a look at that uh, Cam Mazak OPT file, it's just a series of the different PRT files available. So um, if we look at on the top here, this is all the English or inch parts. Uh, I have everything available. But if I'm working in a Mazak, uh, sorry, if I'm working in a metric part file, which my example here is, uh, I've commented out a number of the operation types. So mill rotary, mill multi-axis, mill multi-blade, turning uh, operations, multi-axis de deposition, which is uh, uh, additive stuff. Uh, robot, I, wire EDM, uh, all these things. I, I've uh, removed them from my environment. I've just commented out these lines so they're not read. Uh, and this is a, a nice way to um, limit users from accessing things that they should not be using uh, in a particular environment. Again, you need to spend some time thinking about you know, what's really necessary for your organization, what's going to uh, set up your employees uh, for su success uh, using the tools here. Uh, but another, just another application or, or option inside of, of that. Uh, again, we can go into greater uh, topics here, you know, tools. Uh, we could have configuration files pointing to different tool libraries. Maybe you'd want to, um, you know, certain machine tools, you have HSK63 uh, spindle interface, and you have a tool library of all those assemblies, uh, all those tools using HSK63. And you have another set of libraries for CAT40. Uh, another, another opportunity to... Uh, use some configuration files to divide up uh, libraries and, and uh, databases and things like that. So something just to try to get uh, your mind thinking about different aspects there. Different options that you might be able to leverage in your company. So the next one I want to look at is the installation of a uh, machine tool simulation kit. <clears throat> so now if you have a machine tool simulation kit, uh, what that means is, is a, it's a post-processor, uh, kinematic machine tool model, uh, the configuration of, of using the right post, using the right uh, CSE files, uh, machine library entries, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so now anybody can create an MTK file. You're simply just exporting out a machine kit, uh, and anybody can import a machine kit uh, if you have a uh, if you have uh, the, the caveat being you have to be able to get into Machine Tool Builder. So instead of going through and exporting, saving uh, information from installed machine directory, um, specifying the different uh, pointers that need to be in, in uh, to, to the correct database files and, and graphics files, things like that, all this can be rolled up inside of one uh, MTK file. Um, so again, Standard uh, process that, that you might want to look at using this is uh, if you go and download a kit, uh, this is, in this example we'll use a smart machine kit from uh, Post Hub. If we uh, filter by the smart machine kits, I, we can go ahead and download uh, one of the kits and from that we'll get an MTK file and that's what we're going to go ahead and import into our session of NX. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this. Uh, what I like to do is is first start a, a blank file. So I like to just start a, a model file. Um, nothing, nothing in there. I'm not going to save this file. Um, the important thing is I just you, you can't have a uh, manufacturing session active um, in your your part file. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right to the machine tool builder application. And I've already downloaded the kit. I have it. So I'm going to import my machine kit. And here is a, a FANUC RoboDrill. And here's the MTK file. So simply by importing the MTK file, here's just giving me a message, do I want to overwrite everything? Uh, I already have it in my installation here. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and, and overwrite all the data. And I'll say OK. And it's telling me, um, you know, where is it going to go ahead and, and install this kit? I could change the location, of course. And I'll, I'll say OK. And I get a, a listing window here. It's 
telling me each and every file that's been added to my environment. And I'll go ahead and close this model file that I created. So without having to go through and look at uh, database files, uh, you know, use Notepad++ to edit things and pointers and things like that, uh, I've installed that full machine kit and it's configured it. I'll jump over to my uh, machine tool view here and I'll edit the generic machine to go ahead and access the icon to retrieve a machine from my library. And I'll say, okay, uh, the only, I guess not pain point, but uh, word of, uh, you know, the only note here is uh, when you're importing MTK, you don't get an option to change the location inside of your uh, machine database. Uh, you can go ahead and change this later, uh, but just be aware that your machine kits are going to be added to the end of the list here. So here's my uh, FANUC robo drill that I uh, downloaded from PostHub, and I'll say OK, and I'll import my machine tool into my session. And uh, let's do that again. I selected the wrong. I didn't want to use assemblies. Let's go ahead and use our part mount junction, or I'll use my old machine transformation that's already existing in the file here. And we're loading in our machine tool. Let's also get a we get a little report here saying uh, how the tool pockets were mapped from one setup to the next, and we'll say OK. Uh, and now we can see if I look at uh, this part file, let's go ahead and uh, we have a few operations that went out of date. Uh, of course, we could regenerate those. I'll just simulate the first few operation or program group here. Let's go ahead and jump into NC simulation. And while we're initializing this, uh, the post is going to start running uh, interactively here. Uh, maybe I'll go through and uh, I'll turn off some of my machine components here. I don't want the door or the enclosure on, uh, just so I can better see this. That's all robo drill. Uh, for those not familiar, uh, we kind of have a, it's a very quick uh, tool change machine. It has a turret, uh, so the tool uh, is presented to the spindle in quick uh, chip to chip time. Um, typically lighter cutting machines, things like that. Uh, but a nice simulation kit that we have here. Uh, that we can go ahead and see full machine simulation running the uh, simulating the actual G code here uh, doing the full simulation of tool changes and all that kind of data and so of course we would see any collisions uh, over travels uh, all the benefits that are associated with uh, machine simulation uh, we would get those benefits inside of these uh, part files All right. And again, I appreciate your time here for this session. Uh, I hope you have been enjoying NX University, and we'll be back with you later on some further topics.